All right, how's it going, guys? This is D from FTO Nerd Talk. Uh, I'm here with Isaac Fox. He's a writer and creator of is it Kremisi? <laughs> Kremisi. Kremisi. Yeah, I, uh, looking back on it, probably should have given it a little bit different name because in English it's hard to pronounce, apparently. But oh, so I'm not Kremisi. the only one. Okay, good to know. No, 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 that's a pretty common, pretty common question. They're, almost every con I go to, I get that question at least a dozen times. I'm like, he needs a nickname. Uh, Kremisi, it's uh, it's like a demon, right? Uh, we don't know what it is yet. Okay. It has not been revealed in the story what it is. We just know that it's the intention of the way I've tried to paint it is that it's an event that's happened that our main character is familiar with, but he's not okay. saying to what extent. Sounds very Trigon if we're going like anime, which is which is what your uh, the R cell of your comic book kind of reminds me of. It's very uh, it has like a, a Trigon kind of feel to it with the space cowboy, but it also has like that beat cowboy bebop feel to it with the with the amnesia of what's happening because we really don't know what's happening and the characters are all very lovable. I only got to like the, the first two issues. I didn't read the third, but uh, so far from what I read, I absolutely love it. Thank you. Uh, the big three of the space Western era back in the nineties were the in, really the influences behind my work and then from uh, Bebop, as you said, Trigun, uh, primarily Outlaw Star, which is my personal favorite, uh, played That's a massive a, role in it's inspiring That's a big go-to for a lot of people, yeah. Yeah, it's, it, Bebop is, was more popular in the West than Star was, but for me, Star was a more fun pick. They're both fantastic, though. If anyone out there hasn't seen them, then do yourself a favor and go watch them. They're all amazing. Every last one of them. Uh, every, almost every, every anime space uh, cowboy story is amazing. Yeah, I haven't seen a bad one yet. Ditto. <laughs> including including Kermisi. <laughs> uh, um, so I'm reading the story, and it's uh, Shay is the main character, right? That's his name? Yes, sir. That's correct. And he's like a captain of the ship. Everything in this story is red, and Shay has, has a bit of a drinking problem. Like, why did you give this space cowboy a drinking problem? Well, uh, part of my... my objective with Kermisi is to paint characters that are all suffering from some kind of mental plight. I feel like uh, in today's society, that's something that for the longest time, we've just kind of pushed to the back. We didn't want to talk about it. You know, if you felt depressed or had anxiety or PTSD, or they used to call it shell shock, uh, it wasn't a thing that was okay to talk about. You just right. kind of had to deal with it. Man, woman, didn't matter. Uh, in Kermisi, Every character we encounter that becomes part of the main crew and then some is fundamentally broken as a person. Something's Even happened to them that's just completely destroyed them. In Shay's case, he's lost all hope for anything in the universe and just is attempting to just drink himself to death practically. That's and the, seems, we yeah. see it through issue one, the alcohol is kind of what keeps away hallucinations caused by PTSD. It's kind of like a, how... Uh, John Constantine, Hellraiser, like it's kind of like how Blazer, uh, it's kind of how like that story is. Like the cigarette is a character, the alcohol is also a character inside these stories. Very much so, yes. Con that's, that's I, cool. I, oh, I love John Constantine. Yeah, who doesn't? Right? <laughs> uh, one of the other things about it is um, even the AI, the ship's computer, she also yes. has a bit of a like a mental instability inside the story as well. Well, so in the universe of Kermisi, uh I like that. It is technically a science fantasy as opposed to a science fiction, kind of like Star Wars versus right. Star Trek. Or Firefly, um, yeah. Exactly, which Firefly was a big inspiration. Uh, in, the universe, in the universe of Kermisi, I take the approach that if you're going to be traveling the universe on a regular basis, you would have to have an exceptionally powerful computer to do it. And these computers would have to have new ways of interacting with the user to make them more efficient to use. So kind of like uh, for Iron Man's Jarvis, how you can just talk to it and have a conversation with it and just give it vocal commands. Uh, Shay's virtual intelligence computer named Alice is the same way. She just normally appears in a holographic form where she's a kind of a bodacious blonde girl. It, it took, uh, since you say that, it takes me to, uh, I'm not sure if you've seen the show Archer, Krieger's, uh, yes. Krieger's wife. Mm -hmm. it, it reminds me a lot of that. <laughs> yeah, she she's kind. Of, it's, it's a similar idea, but right. Alice is. Uh, you, you're correct that Alice does have her own problems. She uh, there are supposed to be in this universe laws placed on computer programs so that they stay within certain bounds. Kind of like today, like you don't want an AI freely thinking for itself. You would never want it to do that. 
analysis case, she breaks a lot of those rules in the sense that she can think independently. There's still certain things she's not allowed to do. Like it's probably never going to get mentioned in the book, but she's not allowed to interface in any way with the weapon systems. She okay. can target things. She can't pull the trigger. So she can't do anything like that. Uh, that keeps her from being quote unquote dangerous if it ever happened. Kind of like but, the, the three laws of robotics, right? Exactly. Kind of, kind of trying to follow those uh, laws a little bit. In Alice's case, she feels very helpless that she cannot help Shay with his problems. She sees him destroying himself constantly. And we'll get to it later. She feels guilty over that. It's her job to take care of him and look out for him. She's kind of a nanny as opposed to being just a computer. But clearly, she's not doing a very good job. Or she doesn't feel like she's doing a she's very doing good, a good job. job because yeah. That's the impression I get from her. That she feels like she's not doing a good job. Yeah. Exactly. That's why she's exactly having like things that... These, uh, these open monologues for herself when he leaves the room, she's constantly talking about like the sorrow that he feels and she can't do anything about it. That's correct. It's, uh, it's, really, it's really well written. Um, the, characters all, the, the characters are all very smart. There's a lot of dialogue inside of it, but honestly, like it fits. It has that, that modern comic book feel to it, but also has like the manga feel to it because it's all black and white. And only thing that really stands out color wise is red. So anything that's that's red, like whether it be blood or Kremensi's ship, Shay's ship, sorry, Shay, not Kremensi. No, you're fine, you're fine. Or, or Shay's ship, uh, it's red. Even his uh, wardrobe is also red. Is that something that you intentionally wanted to do, or did that just like happen, like just by happenstance? It was kind of a product of evolution. Uh, when we first started the project, I had worked. Uh, on a couple of small little nowhere independent video game projects in college. And I got done with that. And that kind of made me realize like, I could probably do what I want to do. So I started doing the comic stuff, but my intention originally was to animate for Uh, but I myself am not a very good artist at all. So I work with a team of artists who are exceptionally talented. But, and what happened was that the cost of animation is astronomical, a little bit yeah. beyond my means. Yeah. So I was like, okay, we can't do that. But let's make it true to that 90s era of anime and comics. Like, I grew up, you know, watching Toonami and Batman the Animated Adventure. I'm like, I want it true to that. I, was, I still want to stay true to my, to my roots there. So we stuck with that. And we were good. We, 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 first couple things to do that were color. And I wasn't really happy with how it looked. And okay. it also took so much longer to pump out a page. And it was more expensive. I was about to say, but it costs yeah. a lot more, too. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, cost was always a thing. Because, I mean, I'm, I'm just. I'm one guy. I mean, I own the publishing company and all that, but I'm not, I'm just one guy. I, I, I'm, not, I'm not a trust fund baby. So right. like, oh man, I gotta, I gotta pay for this. And I, it was like a 3 a.m. meeting we had one night. We're talking about like, well, what do we do? And, my, and uh, somebody was like, well, why don't we just use red? And I was like, I stopped for a second. Wait, Cremisi mean crimson in Italian. Why am I not just using red? <laughs> why, why is the most obvious solution to this problem? Not the one that I picked up on immediately. So we started <laughs> using the red. And the red just, it just worked. And part of the reason the red worked is because you see an anime, especially, and I'm not a big fan. I'm not necessarily a huge fan of this trope. I think it's done better in anime like Berserk or manga like Berserk, where you see violence all the time. You just right. see this gratuitous violence, which don't get me wrong. I love gratuitous violence. It can be fun at, like here and there. Yeah. Oh yeah. I love it myself. I prefer dark and violent and hor horrifying anime, manga and comics and that stuff. But you see this happen, and a character will just watch a guy's head get blown off, and then just walk away like nothing happened. I'm like, well, that doesn't. I don't think that's very believable in a sense that if high levels of violence occur, they kind of stay in your mind for a little while. You got to calm down from that. You got to relax. Right. And I wanted to have that impact a little bit on my reader. So when it, we, I think you the did violence, that. I thank like you. It, thank there, you. There, there was one scene you did that like pretty pretty spot on. It was when uh, when Shay walked into a room when he was talking to Maria, and he had a bit of a, a mental flashback of something that may have happened to him. We're not entirely sure. And all he sees is blood all over his hands, all over the floor, and bodies everywhere. And that stuck out to me when I saw that. It really it really stuck with me because like I didn't know what was going on, I didn't know what was happening. And the fact that Shay got so overwhelmed with emotions about that, he screamed. It really made me feel like, wow, this really pops on the page because everything's black and white, and even like. Even with the blood and the bodies everywhere, it was still black and white with hints of red everywhere. It really, really captured that moment. Spoiler alert, by the way. Sorry about that. 
ah, you don't know what happens. It's fun. <laughs> <laughs> I mention that kind of stuff when I go to cons all the time. Like, hey, man, you're going to see some of this stuff pop up. <laughs> That was really the reason we decided to go with the red. I mean, in my mind, every character has a primary color, kind of like a fighting game character, but we don't ever really get to see that until we put them on a cover. Yeah, I get that. Uh, your your book just came out. The Not the book, but the fourth issue has a Kickstarter going on right now, right? Yes. Uh, we we have an issue. We have issue four is out. If you haven't read issue three, by the way, I strongly recommend it. Issue three is when my artist really went crazy, and the art looks amazing. The space. And that's when we start... Yes, and we start yeah. getting to a little bit more of the meat of the actual like story. Uh, I've been told before by other reviewers that uh, Kermisi feels very episodic. I'm like, well, it kind of is. It kind of is. Like, if you and, if really take a seat back and look at it, it kind of it kind of is from issue to issue. It kind of is, but there is an overall entangled story that we're just kind of I'm just peppering in as we go for you the for the reader to pick up on until we get to about issue three and. four. Uh, issue three is when we just we say okay we're not peppering the story anymore here's the story this is this is what's going on so issue, issue uh, three is where like we're like where all the gloves are off like you're gonna see you're gonna see shade you're gonna see the ship you're gonna see everything just really cut loose yes you're gonna see a lot of you're gonna see a lot of new things that you may not have anticipated from the first two issues but the ending of issue three leads directly into issue four, where without without spoiling anything, Shay has to get his ship worked on. Uh, we've seen the, the purgatory before in issues one and two, and it's constantly commented by Alice that the thing needs work. So we, in issue four, we go to a planet to find a rumored genius starship mechanic, and that's where Shay is going to meet a, the titular character of that book, uh, Renee. Where Shay ends up, uh, through a long story short, kind of getting pulled into a local fight between Renee and the local mob. And since the purgatory is in no shape to take off, he doesn't have the option to just run away this time. He's going to have to deal with it. Gotcha. Uh, so I got like got some disturbance going on inside my home. It worked from home. No, no everyone, everyone, everyone knows that. Uh, as as awesome as that is, I um, I also had this one question. To bring up also sorry from Solomon what you were saying. But uh she is uh I guess like it's a it's a, a Kinex. Was that a type of alien he is? So he has ears and a tail also? <laughs> yeah, it's uh uh Kinex. We're, there are some ideas that I like and that are presented in anime and manga that are pretty common. Uh and that is where you have essentially people that have animalistic treats of like an ear and a tail. And that's right. what, Shay's race has. They have more canine features, fox and canine features. And he 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 pulled out he he uh, put that inside of his AI Alice also. She also has those traits. She does. She does. He didn't do it, but somebody did. Okay. Uh, she's, oh, that's, she's, she's that's a whole other she's story. To, yeah, she's programmed to be a, to appear as the same race he is, which is a non-human species. Uh, we do see humans throughout the book, but humans are not the primary focus. I wanted to go with an alien cast primarily. We'll see people from other races join the crew as the book goes on. But uh, I wanted to focus on a non-human cast because I think that opens up a door for just complete new characters and a new way of looking at things than what we as human beings are accustomed to. Right. I mean, granted, I... we are a very diverse species, which is a fantastic thing. But I think it'd be great to see how does a, someone who grew up in space who's from a completely different race and culture view a certain situation. And I'm trying to explore that a bit with these characters. You also put some prejudice inside of it, also with the uh, uh, Stang, one of the one of the antagonists yes. from the first issue. Yes. <laughs> he had a he had a, uh, he had a quote when he hit someone, "You just been stung." Yeah, that was funny. <laughs> yeah, he, uh, I uh, let's to to again weave in some uh, some reality, uh, maybe even that goes along with events in today. Uh, I think that if humanity as a species or any really species is presented with a completely foreign entity, there's going to be people that don't like them. Like, oh, right. you're not the same thing I am, therefore I don't like you. And in, in Stang's case, Shay is an alien on a human world. He doesn't like that. Like, I don't. Why is an alien here? We don't like aliens, and we, we probably won't get to see a lot of it because we don't go into politics or that kind of stuff in the universe of Kermisi, uh, since Shay is kind of his own guy doing his own thing. But there, there's been tense. You don't go, go into you don't go into politics, but you do uh, set up a foundation for a society there with the uh, FF right. Marshals and the uh, USCE, I think it was the United Continents of Earth. Yes. Uh, so 
the way that Kermes's universe is divided up is you have two regions of space, what we call civilized space and the frontier or free space. Right. Uh, the idea being, again, to kind of go back to the, to the old West and back when the world was being explored, you have places that are controlled by an official government. That is civilized space. Like humans, humanity's government is called the United Continents of Earth. Anything that humanity controls is, falls under that government. Uh, like Shay's race has the Kanix Empire. Everything that they control is their civilized space. Uh, there's other forces we'll hear about. We won't really see them per se, but we will hear about them throughout the story. But the place where most of our story takes place is in a place called free space. And what free space is, is it's parts of space that officially aren't under any recognized government's control. Gotcha. So it just means that it's the frontier. Anybody could go out there and start a colony, start a business, live a free life. Uh, we'll see actually in issue five that we've already started working on. A lot of people go out to free space because they want to marry someone who's from a different species. So you, maybe you put if you're, some if you're, templates of politics inside of it, but you don't, you just like let the ripples show and start to work. Yeah. I, I, my goal was to make it feel like a universe that you would actually be living in. Gotcha. Uh, not focus. Like Shay isn't going to come out with a political stance at any point in time because he's just a guy who's doing his own thing. It's a very but, but, a lot of world building inside of it. Right. Exactly. There's, there's that stuff going on. I would like to take a break from talking about like uh, someone's project to bring up the news or topics that are happening right now. Are you much of a gamer? Uh, yes, very much so. So did you hear about uh, Insomnia? Insomniac announces uh, Spider-Man's got a new game with Mob Morales attached to it. I've heard about it. I haven't I haven't really been focusing much on the console stuff just because like I'm a PC gamer. You're a PC guy. Yeah, I, saw, I, I stepped away from console. I own a PS4. Okay. And the only reason I bought it was for Bloodborne. I just <laughs> wanted that one game, and it's the only game I own on the whole system. You sound like me with God of War. Yeah, no, I get it completely. Good game. Great game. Yeah, it's a great game. Uh, so since that, since you only bought the console for one game, if there is a new Bloodborne for the PS5, would you buy one then also? I would wait till the system was kind of towards a little bit later in its lifespan, so it wasn't gotcha. the full price. But yeah, I would. Uh but yeah, I heard about the Miles Morales, and as myself being a big comic book fan, I think Miles Morales is a great character. Yeah. I I really enjoy him, and I if you haven't seen End of the Spider Verse yet, man, he's that's a great movie. I was a little late in the game, but I did watch it, and uh, I gotta say I was crying. I was crying inside of it. So yeah, no, I, I, I completely hear you. I, I can't like a friend of mine kept telling me to watch. He's like, man, you gotta watch it. And I was like, I don't why. I was like, isn't it just like a giant Jordan advertisement? And he goes, no, no, it's more than that. I go, okay, I'll watch it. And I watched that's kind of that was the impression I got from it too. Like, you know, this is gonna be Hulk, but then one uh, an Academy Award. I'm like, okay, you got my attention now. You got my attention. So maybe I should check well, this out. Like every clip I saw from it was like a zoom in, or it was clear to put in his shoes. His I'm like, shoes. Okay, like, yeah. I'm, I'm a big shoe person myself. Like I, I got a pretty nice collection. Like I, I don't want to watch a movie that's advertising a shoe to me the whole time. And then I finally sat down and watched it. And went, wow, I was an idiot. Yeah, I made a <laughs> dumb movie. movie. Made a dumb move. This is what I get. <laughs> or advertising oh, you do better. <laughs> done it before. So I'm like, man, this is this seems dumb. And you watch it. Like, oh no, I am. This is this is great. I was I was being an idiot. Uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm excited for a uh, for a Miles Morales game. I think it'd be great. Right on. I'm glad. I'm glad to hear. It. I'm excited for it. Also, I may get a PS5 just just for that game, the digital version. Is that going to be a continuation of the previous Spider game? I, I think it be... is. It may be okay. the same well, company, kinda, so I think it is. They kind of hinted at that a little bit in that game. At the so, end, I mean, yeah. When he well, showed yeah, full cameo, that makes perfect sense. I'm pumped. Sony, Sony's doing some stuff with these characters. Okay, uh, as we were talking, I was also skimming through issue three of the comic book, mm -hmm. and, and the tone completely changes inside this comic yes. book. Yes. Uh, it yeah. goes from like a space uh, space cowboy to pretty much a space thriller. It kind of turns into dead space a little bit. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't want to say that, but yeah, it's like a, so, it's all like dead space. What, what brought that change up? So Sayako, who's my lead artist, and I are both big fans of horror and things that are terrifying and grotesque, like Dead Space or Bloodborne, like we are just talking about. I love that kind of stuff. Or in the anime the comic yeah. world, uh, Berserk was is one of my favorites of all time, uh, and that's an exceptionally violent book. That that's one of my personal favorites, actually. Like with Casca and Guts, yeah, one of my oh, personal love, favorites. Love it. Berserk is about two men who have a disagreement, and one of them gets on a boat. Uh, I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, pretty much. <laughs> pretty much the whole story. <laughs> Up until it gets finished. Uh, yeah. <laughs> there is an underlying 
horror going on in the universe of Kermisi. Uh And Shay, we will see glimpses that he knows something about it and that he may or, he has some kind of involvement with it in his lifetime, but he doesn't want to talk about it. He doesn't want to deal with it. And issue three is called Wake Up Call for a Reason. That's where Shay stum essentially stumbles into something and he sees something that he's a threat he is familiar with and it's essentially grabbing Shay by the shoulder, shaking him, going, yo, you got to quit playing around. Something's going up and you need to get off your ass and do something about it. Because while you've been drinking, somebody else has been working. Right. And that's that's the whole point of that book is like just telling Shay, you got to wake up. It's it's time to quit drinking and just and quit just being this loser traveling around space looking for easy tail and easy drinks. You got to get back to work because somebody else has been putting in that work while you were away. And then, like it, you see the gravity of that also, the gravity of that effect inside of issue three. Like it really pulls that character in, like it really gives him like a sobering kind of an experience, even though he is still kind of drinking from time to time. He's still going to do that. Uh, we're going to see him. He, he, I, I don't want to give too much away. Please don't. His, rec, his reckoning is coming in issue five. Gotcha. That's where the, that, that's when we're going to see his. Cremisi is done in five issue arcs, and they'll be compiled into volumes later. Uh, five, issue five is the end of the first arc, the, what we're calling the regret arc, and that's where Shay's going to get his reckoning. Interesting. I I want to ask a question, but I don't want to give away too many sports. So I'll, I'll ask a different question. You have a Kickstarter out right now for issue number four. Yes, we uh, do. Where's where can I Kickstarter be found? Uh, it is if you just go to kick, kick, Kickstarter and look for Kermisi issue four. We were funded in less than twenty four hours. I think it took us like seven or eight hours to get funded. Uh, Wow. The great thing is we have the support right now of uh, some very fantastic people. Eric some Chen did an accurate homage like. cover for us. Uh, we have a pretty, I have a respectable amount. Uh, I mean, I always, I always use more, but I think everybody could. <laughs> I think even a, even even someone as wildly successful through Kickstarter as like Brian Polito, who makes like 300k a run, he would say he needs more followers. So I mean, <laughs> I get it. Uh, we had uh, Eric Chen do a cover for us this time. Eric Chen is a member of Art Drum Collectibles. Uh, it's his debut cover in the comic world, and he is he is extraordinarily good. He's 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 going to be doing work for DC and Marvel in the very near future. Like oh, he's wow. going to be one of these guys. Like as I, he's already good, he's going to be doing work for Boom and Titan. He, it's, there's no question about it. He's going to be one of their guys. What was his name again? Uh, Eric Chen. So that sounds sounds uh, spells just like it sounds. Gotcha. We also got a cover color by Anna Zhao. She actually did a Kickstarter pretty recently for her sketchbook. She did really well. Uh, We've also got Jason Hare did some covers for us that are a crossover with a book called Foxy and Wolfie Chaos. Uh, so much more, which Foxy and Wolfie, I'm friends with the creator, a, man, a gentleman who calls himself Kitsune Windsor. Uh, that book is much more lighthearted. It's a book you could read to your kids. Okay. And no, cause you, can't read, you can't read uh, this book to your kids. You cannot. Just no, I would not recommend knows. this. No, no, no. Uh, Kermit is very much, uh, very much aimed at people over the age of 18 because there are yeah. a lot of heavy themes of loss and – uh, there is nudity. There, uh, we don't. I don't allow the depiction of the act of sex, but there is implications of it. Right, and like it's uh, it's tasteful in a way, actually. And yeah, I wanted to keep it tasteful. And I do like I, the I fact that, a, that uh, Alice right. is. Uh, no, I'm pretty sure you wouldn't want that because it wouldn't fit the, the tone of the story if you made it that way. Not at all. It, no, it, no. it would change their song, the tone completely. Uh, I, mean, I don't want to be a boundless book or anything like that. <laughs> But you like you do feel like like fact like this is a person this is like for mature readers and uh, these things do happen but the sex is not really necessarily like a, a part of the story for most stories unless like it is a part of the story then you get to see it that's how I see it also. Well, the only, the most we ever see of that aspect is we will see Shay kind of being for for lack of a better word a dog here and there where he's like hey she looks pretty good what's up like you'll see some <laughs> of that because he's just he's just the way he is. Uh, we will see another character later on that we'll introduce who's, who has a similar taste to him, but this, but uh, she's bisexual, so she'll go both ways. Okay. And who she tries to uh, pick up and flirt with. So we'll get a little bit of a taste of that. I will say also, I do like the fact that, uh, that Alice is one of the few characters, it's like probably the only character inside of this I've seen so far that is hypersexual or hypersexualized and all the He's other the characters, one. and all the other characters have like, you know, just, normal feels and vibes to him like uh, it's just, just show like that's the type of character that she is and this whole book isn't just made like to titillate young men or whomever is like <laughs> that type of thing. Uh, i found i was appreciative of that 
You'll love an issue four where the new character who joins the crew there, Renee, actually comments that she's like, that is one weird-ass virtual intelligence. <laughs> she's, she's very weird. And she's, she's supposed to be. Uh, she's constantly cosplaying in different costumes and changing the way she looks. And she, she's the only character that does what she does. Uh, but that's in part because of my inspiration from anime and manga, which are extremely over-exaggerated yes. formats. Yes, it is. That's that's kind of their shtick. Is that it's their everything is over exaggerated, especially in the shonen world. Yeah. Oh, very. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, I love shonen, so it's definitely on that world. I mean, for for me, do you Haka show or nothing? But <laughs> it. I was the Asian hockey guy, so I hear you. You get Alice, who is everything about her is meant to be an over exaggeration. The way she talks, the way she acts, her movements, the way she dresses, everything. Is supposed to be. She's kind of the embodiment of that anime over exaggeration, but we keep it pretty much isolated to just her. Like this is the one character that can kind of help pull you back from the darkness of the book and the violence that you see. I'm like okay, we can we can we can take a breath here and relax. And there's Alice. She looks good on the screen there, and she's really pretty, and we feel a little better uh, until we see that she looks around sometimes with very forlorn expressions. Like oh, she's hurting too. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> And like that, that was, I was, I was going to bring it up next. Like, uh, I do like the fact that you do have that character that's like that, but she also has a personality on top of it. And I do appreciate that. I think you're going to love issue four where we introduce Renee because she is a woman who, uh, every character from EC is inspired a little bit by, uh, by someone I've known or someone I've met in my life. And, and I think as a writer, a lot of us tend to do this. We put like a part of ourselves in our characters. Right. So Renee has a lot of my like, mistrust and anger and she is just doesn't trust anybody she's always angry she'd rather hit you than talk to you is she the is she the character that's on your on your default pages like on your yes, twitter and her. instagram okay that is her that is uh that is the new character who joins it she looks like a badass I she's cool. great uh, i'm very <laughs> happy to have her in the, i'm very happy to add her to the crew her story is going to be a lot of fun to tell and we're going to see where she comes from. She struggles with the fact that she, we'll see that in issue four here, that she struggles with the fact that she's an orphan. She's never known a family or anything, anyone to care about her. And to make that a step even harder than being an orphan, she's the only alien, she's the only non-human on the planet she lives on. Everybody else is human. Yeesh. So what she's had to deal with growing up has not been pleasant. That She's pretty much dealt with people who either look down on her or just want to sleep with her because, hey, I want to bang this, I want to bang the alien girl. So, so she has that, uh, that that hits you, that I talk to you mentality you were talking about before. Exactly. So she's she's just learned that everybody sucks. Everyone is, for lack of a better word, a, a jerk. I don't want to deal with them. And then she meets Shay, who, as far as she can tell, is an embodiment of everything she hates. <laughs> He's an alcoholic, womanizing, lazy piece of trash who doesn't even bother maintaining his own ship. Why would Pretty I? Much. This guy's terrible. But we're gonna. We're going to have a chance to actually uh, kind of peel those layers away for both Shay and Renee as time goes on. Uh, and I am have I, I can say that uh, I will argue that uh, Shay may or, or uh, Renee may or may not be the uh, arguably the actual hero to the entire story. Really? The heroine. That's a very, that's a very yeah. big tone. Shit right there. Yeah, she kind of is. She plays she plays a massive role in the story. I'm pretty uh, sure she, when your she, fans listen, they're going to be favorite. gasping right now. Oh, she's one of my personal favorites. Uh, I will say the biggest challenge we had with Renee was getting someone to voice her for the trailer. That was almost impossible. It was who, very who do you, Who'd you end up getting? We have a woman named Amber Bray, uh, who's very, she's, she did it very well. Uh, but what she, her profession is, is that she is, she reads um, romance novels. So her initial take, her voice was just fine, but it was extremely sultry. I'm like, I am sure any man on earth would love to listen to that, but that is not how Renee talks. You got to, your voice is perfect, but you got to turn, turn down the sexy and turn up the angry. Just be like, you hate everybody. And she did a great job with it. Uh, like hot girl. Yeah, I get you. Well, exactly. And it was, and I'll tell you, it was actually difficult to find examples for Renee. I was shocked because I know you, you you're, um, I'm a big you comic guy. book guy. I got tons of lists and stuff. You're a big comic book <laughs> guy. I know you see like an anime. You, you see comic books and anime. Like you don't see a lot of characters like Renee in anime. Not in anime. That's uh, that's part of the reason why uh, I I do like shonen, but I don't uh, swear by it. And I 
this is a whole different conversation, but I want to see more strong, powerful women in shonen type animes, but that's predominantly a guy's universe. So. This isn't 100% on that. And I yeah. think if you are a reader who likes strong women, you're especially going to like Kremisi because 90% of the time, it's a strong woman who takes over and shaves yeah. steps to a sidekick position. And issues one and two, Maria. Maria, yeah. The main, she's basically the main character. She, she was a badass. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, Maria was great. I, I, I So the funny part of that is that when we when I first wrote issue one, Sayako Rush, my artist, she gave me the design for Maria. And I looked at her and I said, wow, she is so good looking and so awesome. I cannot use the story I've written for this character. I have to <laughs> so you had to change everything? Oh yeah, I changed That's everything. Crazy. <laughs> Maria was supposed to be. She, Maria was originally written to be this floozy side character that just kind of helped Shay find somebody. I was like, not I who she is I, now. No, I was like, I can't do this. She has to become so. She's so much better than this, and it ended up just working perfectly because it just it just helps show the the laziness that and alcoholism that Shay is. And there's a moment in issue two that is my favorite moment in the series. Uh, Without spoiling it, it's when Shay goes to offer a drink and how she responds to that. I was I was just about to bring that up. That is my favorite. I was moment. just about to bring that up. I loved it. Like she she just swipes it away and like she tells a story about her past and you can tell that she has demons too. But like unlike Shay, she doesn't use alcohol to repress it. And like I and I loved it. Like she she suffered this demon, it haunts her all the time, but she doesn't like alcohol or any kind of narcotic like succumb to, you know, to bring her down. And I that made me appreciate that character even more after that that Thank one you. little Thank scene. You. That was the whole point. I was like, I need like I need Maria to be good. So like, what if she Internally. was like Shay but didn't suck? <laughs> if you were making like a spinoff a spinoff series, please make it about her because she's incredible. Well, here's the thing: Maria's reception was very good. Uh, I was all, I'm always a little concerned. Maybe somebody doesn't like somebody about a character or whatever. Uh, but I've been very shocked that Kermisi, we've a lot of our fan base has been women. Uh, which the wow. book was entirely written with the ideology that it's going to be for men 18 to 35, because that's I who think, I think the it, furry right? aspect kind of helped with that, too. Well, see, I don't think my work is furry. I'll argue that. No? Okay. <laughs> I, I will argue. I will, well, this is, this, so somebody made this little chart that shows, like, levels of furriness, and it's like, if it, here's a tale, not furry. Uh, for whatever reason, uh, we as a human species have decided that a woman that has animalistic ears and tails is attractive. Japan has cat girls. We have Playboy bunnies. We've all decided this looks good for some reason. It's like the one thing we've agreed on. It seems that way. Thanks, Disney. Yeah, well, exactly. So we've all decided that looks good. <laughs> so I, I don't consider my work to be furry. If, if someone does and they enjoy it for that aspect, I have no problem with that. More power to you. And if anything, if you makes it, it makes you like it, I'm glad you're enjoying it. I honestly am. I will tell you that the, when I first, when we first kind of came out of the woodwork and did our first Kickstarter, the first website that did a review on us, that like the first day I got a ping about it, was a very prominent furry website. Wow. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, I wasn't expecting that. And I read their article, and the first line the person who wrote it said is, "Technically, this isn't furry." Went, okay. <laughs> so they're talking about, but they're saying it's not furry. Went, okay. That's a. Uh... That's, a, that's something. Yeah. <laughs> All right. That's fair. Again, if it's, if I guess I'll take it. Yeah. If someone feels it is, then that's fine. I have no, I, I don't take offense to that in any way. I don't think it is because the characters are not. It's covered. a fun, it's a fun drama regardless. So yeah, no, I get you. Exactly. I mean, you can think whatever you want of it. I mean, it's, it's perfectly fine. As long as, as long as someone's enjoying it, uh, that, that's, that's enough for me. That's the whole reason why you're doing this in the first place. I'm sure. Well, I'll tell you what my real goal is. Do tell. As I mentioned, the characters struggling with their, with their issues. Uh, I think a lot of people today, especially like our, I think you and I are about the same age. Uh, late 30s. Our generation. Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. Uh, well, how old? How old? Uh, late 30s. I'm just, that's all I'm going to say for right now. Yeah. Oh, no, I, just, I, I just turned 32 like last week. Oh, I'm uh, older than you. That's for that. yeah. <laughs> so it's a similar, similar age range. I think, but a lot of people that are in our age range and younger, you know, we, we grew up and it became a maybe not more common, but more outspoken that we were dealing with issues like depression. And oh yeah. And stuff. Well, we're going to have to, or else we kept, we'll go crazy and be like, you know, Shay drinking our, drinking our problems away. Oh yeah. I mean, I've, I've done that myself. Uh, so there you go. Did, did a but, few times. So yeah, exactly. I, mean, I went to college. I know what it's like. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got a test tomorrow. Crap. I don't feel like taking it. All right. Well, let's, let's a couple of years to do it. <laughs> <laughs> 
I want to show my characters going through these problems, facing these issues that a lot of people today are facing and they're struggling right. with and they've got nowhere to turn. Cause I, I myself suffer from PTSD and I can tell you it sucks. It's not fun. There's nobody that can help you. No, I'm black but, in America. I definitely suffer from PTSD. I believe me, man. I, I I'm with you. That's that, I get it. And I don't think anybody should be made to feel that way under any circumstance. Agree. But my hope with my book, my honest hope is that somebody out there who's suffering with that problem, maybe even somebody like yourself, who's maybe they can maybe they can identify a little bit with Renee, is they can look at that and they can see these characters struggling with these issues and they can see how these characters face them and eventually learn to deal with or conquer these issues. And it can help people understand that these issues do not define you. They don't make you who you are. And you are better than that, and you can win that fight. And if I can do that for just one person in this world, I feel like I've done my job. Like I've lived my life, and I've done what I should have done. As a noble son, I like that. that. Thank you. That's, that's, what, that's what it's all about. If I can just do that. But yeah, I want to tell the story and have fun with it, of course. But And I want to see some violent scenes and some naked alien chicks. <laughs> but I want to bring that aspect with it. Right on. Uh, I got two more questions for you. Uh, one is going to be a DVA from the from the comments again. Did you did you hear about Denny O'Neill? I have not. Uh, do you do you know who Denny O'Neill is? Right, he uh, he killed Jason Todd. He he did the Creeper. He wrote the Question. Oh yeah, yeah. okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, he recently passed I, away. I actually like Jason Todd. I'm like one of the people who actually like Jason Todd. So so you wanted a few guys. So like he was the guy who killed all Jason Todd, and he recently passed away today. That is. I, I, I feel bad being a person to tell you about this, but yeah, Denny O'Neill recently passed away. I think it was a couple of hours ago. That's sad. I remember DC had it where you could call in and vote what happened. Right. To uh, I mean, it may not be such a downer for you, but uh, I, well, I can see, I can see, no, like this is for a touchy subject for you. It's, 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 it's sad, but at the same time, like I take. I don't take joy in what happened to the person. I take joy in the person's life. Like what, what he did. gave us. Yeah. He gave us Jason Todd, who we've all seen was a bad Robin. Yeah. But what he becomes as Red Hood. So many layers. Is phenomenal. And so I feel like he created something pure. Like he did something with his life and he accomplished something. And then Judd Whittick and uh, came around and gave Jason Todd a new life and it's uh, been soaring ever since. So like, thank you, Daniel Neal. Thanks for all your Green Lantern and Green Arrow stories showing, uh, showing the world about uh, addiction with Roy Harper. Like he did that. He gave, he put that idea of Roy Harper, uh, Speedy, being on drugs. So he also gave us a question, like a neurotic detective with no face like he, he did that he put all those characters and we're seeing those characters we see those characters in Roy Shack we see those characters and uh like being retold with Renee Montoya being the question also so he did a lot of stuff for the comic book world and he's gonna be a great loss I agree uh there's one more question I want to ask you about your artists who, who were the artists on these books well my lead artist is a woman named Sako Rush she's uh she's from Poland uh, she's a mangaka from Poland. Uh, what her what her kind of claim to fame was? She was a, she was a painter, a very accomplished painter. Okay. Um, I've seen her paintings, and I asked her where'd you take that photograph, and she's like, "It's not a photograph." I'm like, "Are you serious? <laughs> how, how do you paint that?" And she, I got lucky in that I met her. Was she just started doing manga like drawings just for kind of fun, kind of get better at it? And I was like, "Hey, I'm trying to do this book. Do you want to work with me?" And I, I went through several did. people. Yeah, I went through several people. Basically, what I went to, I did it as a. It, she started. She started with me from the very beginning. Oh wow! Well, she wasn't. The, she wasn't the first. She wasn't the first. I went through DeviantArt back when that was the main that hub was the for thing. I, I, I just understand. had an with someone else talking about that. Yeah. Yeah, I think Art Station's kind of overtaken that now. Yeah, but that in was, Instagram. Yeah, uh, yeah, and then but DeviantArt at the time was like was the thing. So I went through there and I got a couple people that did some early designs for me. Some people didn't work out. Some people. Uh, I had a couple of weird ones. Where people were like, they were doing a great job. And I always pride myself that I pay like immediately. Like as soon as the work is done, like I send the payment like that minute. Like, is it done? Is it approved? Okay, here's your money. Gotcha. But I've had people disappear right after that. I'm like, you're, you're making steady money. What are, what are you disappearing for? <laughs> so, and I met Sayako and I was like, hey, here's the designs of the characters I have so far. These are the kind of changes I'd like to see made to them. What can you do? 
And she just loved the story of Chromecia Mew. She, she dove into it. She's like me. She likes that horror stuff and that, that monstrous aspect. I can see why. And she dug into it, and she really – I mean, if you look at issue one's art compared to issue three's, you can see like how she's just gotten better and better. And even now, she's sending me pages for issue five. I'm looking at it, going, "This just looks so good." Like, the details, so good. the details from issue two to issue three, it uh, it switches drastically, like in the in the best way possible, though. Uh, the details in space, the ship, the horror aspects, the characters, and the nuances, the color color of red. In their wardrobe like it's uh it hits all the buttons and all the cylinders and uh the dialogue along with it it just brings everything together like uh, she did a great job at art and the writing really keeps it all together yeah she she's done a great job uh for issue four the new issue for renee uh sako uh wanted to take a year off because she just had her first baby uh, she, had, she got married and having her first kid and i was like okay well, let me and, and Poland is a lot nicer to you if you when you have your kids over here in the states. Though. Yes, it is. Like she's like, she's like they're giving me a, government, governments let me do all this stuff. I need to take some time for my kid. I'm like, you know what? Go ahead and do that. I'm gonna talk to a friend of mine. And again, Kitsune Windsor, the guy did the Foxy and Wolfie book. And he said, I got an artist you'll like. I said, okay. So I met Mitsu, and it started off rocky. I'll be perfectly honest. We started off rocky. Because uh, we started off not working well together. I was like, okay, this isn't working. This isn't working. I don't like what you did here. You need to change this. And it was rough. It was the first, like, ten pages were rough. Okay. And we got through that, and then we sat down with each other, and we just figured out how to make it work. Like, okay, she, she understood what I was trying to do, and I understood how she approached things. Because I was so accustomed to working with just Sayako that I was like, okay, I custom tailored the scripts for Sayako. And now I had to hand the script to Mitsu, who Mitsu is Portuguese. Okay. So her interpretation of English sometimes is a little different than Sayako's interpretation of English. So you have to, sense. if you're working with someone who's not, not native to your language, you have to be a little more catering and a little more patient. It's like, oh, okay, you may not understand what this means. Or I mean, you need to word this a little differently because I understand that. First off, you're smarter than me because you speak multiple languages. <laughs> I need to fix this. <laughs> I mean, it, I can't. I, I speak a little bit of Spanish and a little bit of Japanese. But I'm don't throw me in the middle of Tokyo. So we got through it for about ten pages, and then Mitsu just started killing it over and over, and we started getting better and better together. And now she and I have a very close relationship, uh, so much so that I've got another IP coming out, uh, another a whole new book that's not even related to the Kermisi. And she's the lead art. She's taking over lead artist for that as Sayako returns for issue five to resume her role as lead artist for Kermisi. Can you tell me the name of that, that title that's coming out? Uh, it'll be a while before it comes out, uh, but the book is called Suck You Busted. It is a completely <laughs> different tonal shift. Uh, it is not good for kids at all. Do not let your children see this book. <laughs> you don't Do not say. let your children see this you book. You don't say. <laughs> uh, well, if you are someone who's a fan of etchy anime, like uh, High School DxD or Monster Musume, that kind of stuff, and you like those raunchy comedies, maybe uh, Heaven's Lost Property, right. you're going to be in heaven. Cause it's, a, it's, a, it's a raunchy comedy uh, inspired by heavily by the original Men in Black, which is, in my opinion, a gorgeous movie. Okay. Uh, That's different. But instead of it being aliens, it's demons. Nice. I can dig but on that. Demons in this universe are uh, the demons we primarily deal with in this one is a, is a succubus who is, of course, a sex demon. Right. So, Any incubus going to be in this too? or uh, You will see a couple of them. Uh, that book, the thing, I'm try the thing I'm happy to tackle with that book is I think all of my books need to tackle some kind of issue. Even though Succubus is going to be a raunchy comedy, it needs to still have some kind of core backbone to it to support. I appreciate it. that. I, I was hoping it wasn't going to be sexy just for sexy's sake. That's never. No, 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 no. I don't. I don't like that. I, I like there to be some I. kind of point to it. There has to be a point. Otherwise, yeah, everything. I, oh, this is just porn. <laughs> we'll we'll throw in some sexy. Well, I'll, it won't be pornographic. Be, <laughs> you'll see topless and you'll see some butts, but you're not going to see anything else. Good, right um, on. Good to hear. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna draw a full on head. <laughs> I'm not doing that. Maybe, now, maybe, if somebody maybe offers me enough money, I'll think about it. But, <laughs> Uh, hey, one of my artist friends told me a long time ago, pick an artist you like who doesn't do dirt, dirty artwork, come back in six months, they're doing dirty artwork, figure out that's where the money's at. 
Uh, <laughs> funny. <laughs> That's oh, a good God. one. But uh, this book, there will. Uh, what I want to tackle with this book, and we'll be we'll see scenes of it through there, is that book's going to deal a lot with prejudices we deal with in America on how we view people for who they choose to love or who they, who they date and who okay. they're romantically attracted to, uh, which it's home. It's, it's very home for me personally. Uh, cause I live in the American South and people like me aren't necessarily popular here. Uh, so I want, I want to kind of present that a little bit in that book and bring that to light. Like, uh, it's, you know, it's funny how, you know, we're a free society, but suddenly you're not so free depending on who you love. Huh. It's going to be kind of a point of that book. It's not going to be, I'm not going to like hammer it in your face, but that's definitely an underlying tone. That's, that's the issue that I want to tackle with that book. That's, it's going to be interesting like, to see how that works out considering like, you know, like there, there will be scanty class people inside this comic book. So it's going to be interesting to see how you. Well, yeah, you there's definitely a lot of that, but there's definitely a lot of that, but I, it's kind of like with Kermisi with Alice. Like I like to use a little bit of a little bit. Of, I think, I think everybody deserves some eye candy. Okay. I, I subscribe to that theory. I don't care who you are, what you're into. Like even Shade's like half naked most of the time too. So yeah. Well, you get to see a shot of him in one of the books back when he was younger and in Shade. And there will be we do get a male character later in the book who is fan service for women, or if you're into men, that right. he's more fan servicey towards that. If that's what you're into. Right on. Uh, on, I think everybody deserves. From our previous Kickstarters, actually, I'd like, if you want, I'll send you some of the images. Uh, we did pinups before. We did pinups before that are, and some of the pinups are of women. Some of the pinups are of shirtless men. It, like you said, you're from the thirty. You're like you're thirty or something. Like uh, you know about that old school image or DC and Dark Horse uh, pinup like comic books that he's a brand. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah, and I mean, I'm all about the well, beyond that. Beyond that, like I get to work now closely with the uh, art germ collectibles and they obviously put out a lot of stuff for art germ. And I see a lot of the way he draws his women and he draws like some of his guys, like he, like, he <laughs> makes his like, he draws like, like Ryu from street fighter looking like yeah. diesel and like beefy. I'm like, that man's a man. God. Yeah. And then you look at like, uh, the way he draws, like, uh, oh God, the way he drew uh, Chun Li looking at Chun Li, like, I just want to marry that like right mm. now, please. His, his storm and his, uh, his suit, his storm and invisible woman is very great. I love both of those that he did. Yeah. Oh, I, I, so I'm biased. I love the storm with the Mohawk. I right. love that. Cut. I love that. Beautiful. I found her so much. It's just something about like a strong woman with like that kind of Mohawk. It's just like, it just like hits me right in the heart. I'm like, <gasps> I love she it. knows how to wear it. <laughs> she knows how to wear oh. it. Storm. Well, Storm's always been my favorite X-Men character. So yeah, there you go. <laughs> I'm, I'm biased towards her to begin with. So I'm like, Storm is like was worshipped as a goddess. I mean, come on, she's amazing. So how can you not like her? Exactly. Exactly. And, and then Halle Berry played her, and I was like, oh, this is great. Uh, yeah, for a while, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> for a while. Well, I'm not talking about the writing. <laughs> yeah, or her, her as a character. Yeah, like her trying to do those accents, not so much. Well. She, she goes, you don't. I, I love watching it. Don't get me wrong, but like she, she should have picked an accent and stuck with it. That's just me talking. Uh, there's a couple of, uh, I mean, Game of Thrones could be held to that same the standard. Oh, absolutely. Standard. Where oh, a couple yeah. Of characters whose accents change throughout the story. Like, Where's this Wasn't guy a fan. from exactly? Uh, what? M- Momoa is one of them, but yeah, that's neither here nor there. Yeah, he did that. Momoa's hot and all, but uh, yeah, yeah. I'm well, glad they didn't give him any lines. That's his job, right? His job is a professional <laughs> hot guy. I mean, like, don't get me wrong. If I was built like that, I would do this. Like, I wouldn't wear a shirt anymore. I would take every shirt I own and just throw it in the trash. <laughs> like, have you have anymore. you seen Conan? Like, Conan was pretty much that. Like him without a shirt. <laughs> like so yeah, just just saying. No hate to Jason Momoa. Isn't it like, like every Thor movie now? It's like yeah. every Thor movie is pretty much, which was the great thing in uh, Endgame where they turn that on his head where he's not <laughs> where he's, he's, he's not uh, at this, the belly he's not as a as a tried to multi part of CMS yeah he's he's kind of like more like your everyday guy looking now yeah I mean, he, still, he still is he still has some guns but you know yeah <laughs> alright uh, <laughs> let, let, let the people t- uh, know where they can find you yeah you can find us on Facebook we are at Facebook Kermisi Comic we are on Twitter at I believe we are Kermisi Official let me double check that because I mean I had to name these things. I'm bad. I'm I'm so terrible at social media. I, took me a I while know my too. generation. My generation's the one that like got it, and I'm like I don't understand it at all. Because uh, we took Kermisi a break. Comic, and yeah, Kermisi going. official or Kermisi comic. You can find us on Facebook. Kermisi comic. Kermisi underscore comic on Instagram. Uh, and if you want to check out our Kickstarter right now, we are we're already funded. 
the nice thing about a Kickstarter that goes through us is that when we do a Kickstarter, the book is already done. You're not paying for something that you're going to have a chance to get. You're paying for something you're guaranteed to get. Our last two Kickstarters, everybody got everything. We don't skimp on that. We throw in some bonuses. We'll throw in some random goodies. Uh, this time we've got multiple covers. We've got signed covers, remarks, certificates of authenticity. Wow. You know, we, we, we actually have tiers where Anna Zhao, Mitsu, Sako Rush, or Jason Hare will draw you a cover. <laughs> they'll, they'll sketch you a cover on a, on a blank copy of a book for you. Wow. And in the case of Mitsu, uh, she's the only one who has this rule, but Mitsu will go as lewd as you want for a cover. So if you want something <laughs> really out there, she'll do it. Everyone else is okay with etchy, but Mitsu will go full-blown anything you want. All right, then. She sounds like a fun person to bring to parties, right? On. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I, she, I consider her a sister. I love her. She's great. Right on. Uh, and you're also on Comicology, right? Yes, we are. Uh, issues one through three are on Comicology right now. I think issue one is still on sale, actually. I can double check really quick. I'm sorry for my keyboard. It is incredibly loud. No, you're fine. Uh, no, it, the sale's over. Okay. Uh, but you will find that every book we have on Comicology has a unanimous five star rating. And if you happen to look us up through any media on earth, we are unanimously high rated, <laughs> which is a, well worth a, it, a kind of a, say. kind of a humbling thing to feel. I feel like I'm being like a braggart by saying that, but it's like, I've actually had people at conventions on like a, on like a Friday come by and like, Oh, okay. I see your book. I'll look into it. Come back on Saturday and be like, yo, I read the reviews. Everyone says to read your book. I'm like told you, man. <laughs> <laughs> Just shake your dust off. I time. get you. <laughs> All right, well, this has been DWF to another talk, and I've been talking with Isaac Fox right now, talking about his, uh, his amazing book, Kerminsky. You guys have a good one. Isaac, thanks for joining me, man. I'm very grateful. Thank you for having me.